In the 1800s, they had this idea that the ancient world was this sort of like paradise where people lived and played and celebrated, and they weren't even that old yet. And uh, they were saying, well, you know, this was a paradise of the classical world. But more recently, archaeology, you know how that is, it's always, uh, they're always coming up with something new. They found that, um, you know, the ancient world was a sort of, you know, ecological disaster for all kinds of people there because they were digging up the fields and they'd over farmed their fields so much that uh, they had to, you know, um, fill up the th the second, he had to invade Egypt or marry his daughter to the, to the prince of Egypt so that they have food because they'd already so depleted their their uh, fields of all the minerals by over farming that they didn't have enough to eat for their soldiers to fight in wars. And um, so too, you know, this is um, another idea they had that when they dug up Pompeii, they thought themselves the, the logical, um, you know, you know, uh, holdovers from. You know, not leftovers, but left, not left-unders, left-uppers from the ancient world. And so they dug up Pompeii, and to their surprise, they found all these, like, really kind of deteriorated, not just the walls, deteriorated kind of, like, murals and stuff. And they were so surprised by them that they put them in separate, you know, hiding places and little museums that are, you know, out of this, um, out of the old uh, uh, parking zone, <laughs> where they park their, uh, you know, their film bills, but, the old film bills. But that was actually... Um, you know, they were so surprised, and I think it's natural. It's only natural for them to believe this. They believe in a paradise of, um, you know, civilization. Civilization seems like a paradise for people. But there's a problem in this paradise, and that was that people were treating evolution so bad. And I think this is the problem that people were having with overcrowding. When I think of paradise, I think of a sustainable paradise. Sustainable has gotten sort of, you know, it's not a clean, it's kind of a recycling, unclean kind of word, supposedly. But, um, you know, you recycle as you bicycle. Well, you know, your pedal-powered helicopter is always going to have, uh, you know, it won't take up much fuel and, uh, you know, you're silent. You get, get really good exercise. You don't go up, I can't come down. <laughs> and so if you have this sort of, um, you know, uh, paradise, we think that's logical. But... Um, I think because of the way people are treating evolution, paradise, but the, at the expense of who, we might ask. You know, evolution was suffering in an unnatural way. And so, you know, I think um, naive ideas about paradise aren't as good as, you know, they would say, well, know thyself, the ancients would, but their world collapsed, their world perished. And this is one of the reasons that I think in the 1800s they were so sort of surprised. It's kind of so unsettling. You know, you think you have control of paradise, and then, you know, so you come to an end of a perfect day, well, check again. Come to the end of perfect 2,000 years, check again. And so what I th mean by this is that, um, you know, when people treat evolution in kind, it's sort of, un it's not fair, and it's not paradise. And um, so um, it, w it would be increasing the competition for decreased resources per person, room and being the most important of all resources. Life can't li exist without room. You know, when, when people lose their land, the history shows they disappear from history. And so... Um, when we say about Pompeii that it was uh, not what they suspected, when they were sort of like, you know, spying on their own, um, you know, they put a mirror on their television so they could see the old uh, rewinds <laughs> of the rolls, but uh, they found rolls in Pompeii that are bread, old bread, and it's still, it's still not even, you know, um, I think they still haven't got the 2,000 year freshness date even solved after, even, even so. And um, so, you know, um, when you have increased competition or decreased resources, you're going to have a problem about uh, the way it wraps back around and causes it stress to people that they reduce the overcrowding gradually. And so I think we could reduce the, the overcrowding peacefully. This is what evolution is telling us. We could either, if we, if we have no you know, limit on our numbers and we have to limit them voluntarily or it won't be sustainable and we'll have a crash. And so I think there may be a crash of our civilization. I think it's maybe what's causing all the deaths to build up around the world. And, you know, money crashes tend to be severe because of territory per person, resource per person. And so I think we could do, like in Mexico, they're building up, they're reducing their crowding by soap operas, you know, and uh, other methods like these, like behavioral changes, like maybe using um, cyber machines to, um, you know, find other alternatives to creating such overcrowding, and then we have enough room to move or breathe. And um, that's why I think they were so surprised by that, because it's so unsettling. You think you have paradise, and then you find you don't have it. 
And, um, you know, the idea, just know thyself, I think, know thy world, know evolution. Evolution is more general than we are. If we have paradise, paradise is fine, but not so much that, not so that evolution is, innocent people are innocent, evolution is suffering so much that we can't solve it. And I think our, our, our pay to make it so that we're not going to have a huge crash or something is to pay for reducing the overcrowding peacefully before it's reduced with more uh, extreme methods by those who don't really care about, you know, this get their way by doing so. It's part of their agenda to do so, like in some of the countries of the world where it's going on, you know. And so um, this is why I think that, um, you know, some would say that, uh, some have said that who uh, studied the fall of the Roman Empire well, you know, we can't know what history says. This is what history shows. It's no, there's no guarantee it won't return. And the others say, well, you know, we must accept a conservative agenda and everybody living in poverty, because this is the way things are, um, because, you know, we have to accept that. And, but I offer a third alternative here. I say, this is the third alternative. We can, um, you know, if we reduce the overcrowding, then we can have a sustainable, you know, it's, it's not guaranteed, it's not by luck, but it's rather if we reduce the overcrowding peacefully, then it won't be have to reduce by more extreme methods. And so this is why... Um, I think that it's always, a, a, you know, it's good to uh, understand our world more than just understand what we think we want for ourselves, you know. If it's the afterlife, then so be it. But also, of course, we have to live a life here in this world that, that uh, you know, we can't, we can't take it with me when we go. We want enough to make it so we r reach there. And I think this is a valuable method of improving the world generally, like by, by um, you know, uh, improving relationships with um, stuff like AR or VR.